Hi everybody, Kat from Tiny Home Tours. Today's video is brought to you by the Tiny Living Course. Myself and the team here at Tiny Home Tours have been really hard at work creating the most comprehensive online course available for going from traditional to tiny in no time flat. Currently, we've been offering a 30% off early bird discount for lifetime access to this course. Today, and today only, ending tonight at midnight, we are hosting a Black Friday flash sale. Hit the link in the description to go to our shop page, enter the code FLASH40 at checkout, and you will get 40% off for lifetime access to this amazing course. We walk you through every single step in the process and we can't wait to help you make the leap from traditional to tiny and start living the life of your dreams. We hope you enjoyed today's video. I am Nikki and I am a special education teacher uh, just north of Austin, Texas and this is my tiny house. Sometimes I call it Big Blue. I don't really name inanimate objects so I don't always call it that. Um, but when people are looking for it I say look for the Big Blue tiny house. Uh, it's 356 square feet uh, and it is 43 by 8.5 feet long. It was built by Nomad Tiny Homes in Dripping Springs, Texas. Welcome inside. This is my kitchen and starting here I have a gas range which I love. I'm super stoked with an event hood. I also have this super cute custom made little oven cover that uh, was made here in Georgetown by one of our local sip and stain places. Um, I have a microwave and oven combo which I thought I would like, which I don't really, so I am hoping to upgrade that to an oven at some point. I know that there are some that fit the same space. Um, also over here, there is a fold-up table, which I really don't ever use as a table, but I do uh, often use when I'm cooking as a prep space. Also have this nice double sink since I did not do a dishwasher in my tiny home. That was one of the things that living in Texas they told me was not recommended due to the humidity which we are experiencing today. Um, so I hand wash all of my dishes, drying rack, um, double sink. I do kind of wish I just had one big space because I have a tendency to pile up my dishes <laughs> and all of those dishes for um, my stove top are hidden in here which is really nice there's lots of space in these cabinets and then all of my spices are in here as well um, cleaning products nothing really of importance down here but I do have an ice maker down here which I really like because I like ice in my water and I don't have that in my fridge this is what I primarily use for my oven right now which works fine but it is even a little smaller than I need for some things. I do like to bake breads and things like that. Got into the sourdough craze during the pandemic, so I do still still do that. Still have a sourdough starter in my fridge as well. Um, and all my dishes are up here, my plethora of cups. Do still have my KitchenAid also for those uh, sourdough baking. And just lots, lots more storage. I really love the kitchen storage because there is so much space. Um, trying to stay organized can be a little bit of a challenge even with as much space as I have. I think I overshoot it sometimes, but uh, it's, it's working out. This is my dish drying rack. Um, I actually got it as a Christmas present because cabinet space is at a minimum here and I didn't want to dry my dishes on my minimal cabinet space as well as you know my butcher block cabinets even though they are stained and sealed. This it saves me a lot of space because again I like to pile up dishes and then they need to dry because there's no place for them to go. Um, when it is not gross outside, it's also nice to have these big windows, even though where I'm parked for right now, it's not a great view just yet. I also have my like produce hanger over here, which is helpful. Um, again, just saving the counter space so that it's usable space. Kitchen's one of the places I feel like I'm the happiest with. I put a lot of thought into that. My plans when I uh, started laying out the house are very different than where I am now, but I still am very glad that those plans went into this kitchen. So I have an apartment style retro classic refrigerator. It's super cute. It has all my cards and student work and things on it. So I do love having a magnetic fridge and a place to hang those things as well. Cause also wall space with all the windows is, uh, 
hard to find at times. Uh, fridge on top and freezer on the bottom. The one thing about this freezer, it's drawers and it takes up a lot to cool the freezer. So that is a little bit of a challenge as well if you have anything big that needs to be frozen. But generally I, I don't worry about it too much. I do still use a robot vacuum because normally there are three dogs in the house with me. They're not here today for a sake of noise, but uh, it's very helpful with the dog hair besides on the stairs. I also have a little hidey hole and a little step ladder in here and this giant thing of foil and junk on the side, but just another place to hide things. In my cabinets on this side, my pantry coffee maker and dog food, even though it's hid behind a butcher block uh, piece right now that is the piece from here because my dogs will try to steal their food if it's not. And all their treats are up there and my coffee, very important for the mornings. And this is my pantry, it's a mess, but it's plenty of space, love it. Everything that I need is all down there, as well as additional hidey holes, crock pot, things like that on this side. Uh, one thing that I wasn't really sure what to do with at first were these empty spaces on the bottom, since my dogs get into the things that I generally leave out, including my shoes and their things. A lot of that is not down there and I didn't know what to use it for a lot of times, but now there's a step stool and just some other bins and things that are hidden underneath there. So just nice extra storage space, even though I didn't really know what to do with that at first. I think a lot of things went into me wanting to go tiny. Some of them being just general dissatisfaction with, uh, mortgage lending. I lived in a traditional home, owned a home that was about five times the size of this uh, before this. And the real estate market in Austin is crazy for traditional homes. Taxes are very, very high. And I just really didn't need that much space. I needed roommates to afford it. And that was just not something that I wanted to continue. So that was kind of the start of it. And then going through some experiences with friends and vacations, I really thought that going smaller was something that I could do. And I downsized for about a year preparing before I even put my house on the market. And this is, this is where I, where I ended up. I also at the time was transitioning more into a like holistic lifestyle, using more natural products, eating uh, better generally, spending more time outside. And this was another way to kind of meet those goals as well. So just living more naturally, living with less things, living a more minimalist lifestyle, wanting to be outside and spending time with people and doing things that I enjoyed rather than focusing on things. Transitioning from the big house into the little house, I think was somewhat easy for me because I planned it so far in advance. Um, I think I spent a lot of time really intentionally going through my things over a long period of time of about a year to be comfortable moving into a small space and not feeling like I was just having to get rid of things right there in that moment after making that decision and then potentially feeling the anxiety of, oh my goodness, this is not what I thought I was getting myself into. Just being really intentional in that way, I think helped me transition a lot. here is my wardrobe and it fits a lot of stuff. I'm super happy with it. Um, I also use hangers that allow me to hang lots of things in here for the various uh, things that I need for work and for grad school and just for generally changing 40 degree temperatures every day as well as my shoes, jewelry, towels and everything else that I need in here. On this side, I have a washer dryer that's stacked and I actually love it. It's pretty small, um, but it works really fast and I am super happy with it as well. Um, I don't have a hamper because I just throw everything straight into the washer until it's time to run, run it back in the dryer. It's so much faster than the washer and dryer I had before. Um, and then there's just general storage on the side. Also was a little challenging to learn how to fit into kind of the narrow space that was built there, but 
you know, I figured it out. I've been in the house for about 14 months now. So trying to get different storage bins to make that work. Up on top of my washer and dryer, I do have extra stuff for my Incinelet. Um, do have an Incinelet in my bathroom instead of a traditional uh, or flushing toilet or a composting toilet. An Incinelet is a toilet that basically burns everything that goes inside of it. It incinerates it. Um, that is part of the reason why it's really loud. It has a fan that blows everything um, out the backside through a vent and the a dryer vent basically keeps rain and critters from coming in back in and it gets up to like 1300 degrees so it gets really hot it's not hot when you sit on it don't worry but uh the dryer vent does have to not allow a backflow which is one of the original issues with mine um as well as just making sure that the thermometer was working correctly and getting it clean um one of the things is it is supposed to be toxin free um, when you remove the waste from it, but it is still not clean. Like it's still ashy and you know, there's some unpleasantness about just the kind of grime. It was difficult to get used to as I hear about composting toilets as well. Um, but generally I like it. I like the flexibility, um, of not having to require a sewage line or anything like that. And it is really noisy though when it is running, which is why it's currently not running right now. Um, I also have my trash cans hidden on this side. Also because of the dogs, I generally lock them in the bathroom, not the dogs, the trash cans, so that they don't get knocked over, or rummaged through or anything like that. This is also an area of having to get used to, even though I planned to move into a tiny home, I really did a lot of preparation moving from my old tiny, or not my old tiny home, my old home. Um, that was about 2000 square foot, about five times bigger than this one. Um, the counter space in the bathroom has been a bit of a challenge to get used to. Again, these are really big and nice and um, full for storage, but just like putting on makeup, which I don't typically wear, but doing a, a full face of makeup can be a bit of a challenge um, to have everything out. And in here, this also opens and hides a lot more stuff. So lots of places to put things, not always a lot of places to access things. Something to keep in mind when you are putting in your sink or uh, any type of working space rather than just storage space. Um, I also don't have a towel rack. I just hang it up here and inside my shower is just a, a one piece with uh, some seats. That wasn't really my choosing. It's just kind of what I what I got when I got a one piece shower. But my shower curtain on the inside also has storage spaces that I don't really use, but it's kind of nice to have for like extra things when I need them. Um, and I have some more storage in the corner that is just stuck to the wall with all of my natural soaps and things because I do um, run gray water into a French drain system and so I use all natural and biodegradable soaps just to make sure that that is what is going on to the earth rather than a bunch of chemicals. I actually just recently got this like mini couch. I really like it. It's a place where me and my dogs can hang out as if they don't already have enough other beds around but it's a place where we can hang out to Together, since I'd rather be there than there and um, also a nice big window in the back I can drop these down on my doors and use this as a white screen for my projector that's up in one of my rooms right now sometimes I bring it down we have a little movie night down here um, also I have obviously a lot of plants and green space to not just be white blue and black in here um, and I really, really have gotten into that during the pandemic as well. It just makes the space feel even brighter and lighter for me. Um, I do have a Pioneer Mini Split Inverter, so it was also something that took some time to get used to. It is currently very cold in here right now, and it gets very cold, and I also feel like very nice and warm. Finding the middle point can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes when I set it on auto. It seems to not always know what to do, but when I set it on a temperature, it works very, very well and gets to that temperature very efficiently and effectively. Um, and it's just then having to adjust that if I need to. I also have this really cool fan that I am actually really glad that I have. It helps move air since I only have the one unit. 
um, in here and it is a little bit of a bigger tiny home especially how narrow and long it is the fan helps move air around since it oscillates when it spins and I I think that makes a big difference especially for the lofts I don't plan to go back to living in a traditional home or a larger home. I plan to stay in a small, um, even if it is not necessarily on wheels, a small living arrangement of some sort. I just do not see the need for the space at, at this point after living in the house for as long as I have and it's only been a year. Even um, thinking in the future if my situation changes, children, anything like that, I don't see why you couldn't do that in a small space and I don't see that um, going to a bigger space is what would help me do that. Fortunately for me, my <laughs> parents live in a area just north of Austin that is unrestricted and so I have been able to keep my tiny house since I've had it here. Um, it's a little farther from my work than I'd like to be and it's a pretty big challenge looking for land even though I saved some of the what I made on my traditional home I saved some of that to purchase land during this current climate of real estate market in Austin as well as just generally the restrictions in Austin uh, it has been really challenging to find any land that would even allow for a tiny home but I am very fortunate right now to have the situation that I have and I'm just gonna keep looking knowing that you do have to be really aware of if you're going to purchase or rent what the restrictions of those places are So this was originally planned as an office. It's kind of a catch-all space for me right now. Um, there's also a through vent on this side behind the barn doors. Uh, works a lot better when the barn doors are open, but uh, it does pull air from this cooler room through up into these two rooms. And sometimes I work here, but generally a lot of times it's just a sitting space, a crafting space, a place also to hang out with my dogs since their things are in here. Their doggy door is in here. Um, a lot of times I pull out the table and things when I have guests over. This is an antique from my great aunt. This is why I've kept kind of this very large piece of furniture in a small space. Um, one of the things that is one of my tips, I suppose, is putting things on wheels. This is actually made for washer and dryers and that it's on so it can hold the weight of this table. It's nice to be able to kind of pull it around into where the couch is, into different spaces in this room if the dogs don't need the doggy door. And same thing with my, my little desk. My little workspace is also on wheels and it's nice to be able to kind of move it around if I wanna sit on the couch, sit on the bench, hang out with the plants, need a better space for Zoom versus the windows and the dogs. Um, and so having the furniture that moves on wheels is, is really nice to rearrange with the dogs and when guests are over as well. So behind the curtains, I have a bunch of storage. It is, a, I don't know how many feet back actually, but it is what goes under the gooseneck part of my trailer. And we're not gonna open it because it is where I just throw a bunch of stuff. And since it is pretty deep, several feet, um, it's kind of challenging to get in and out of. It's a lot more of my long-term storage, like my suitcases, um, crafting things that I don't use all the time, and like keepsakes and things like that that I didn't want to ever get rid of that I also don't need out all the time. So this is the loft space that is above the gooseneck part of my trailer. So it is got standing room. It's six foot on this side and seven foot on that side. Uh, it's the room that I primarily sleep in. Um, I do sometimes sleep in the other loft that we'll get to because my dogs can go up the stairs and sometimes we have slumber parties up there. Um, but when I need a good night's sleep and be ready for work, I sleep up here. It also has all of my pictures and some more antiques and things from my great aunt that I didn't want to get rid of, as well as my carnivorous plants that are require 12 hours of light, which is why they're living under this light right now. And this one also has a 
exhaust fan more than a through fan so it helps keep this room a little bit cooler as well. I also additionally installed a oscillating fan in this room because the mini split is directional in the opposite direction and the through fan only does so much to get air back here but with these two things it, it makes a big difference and it's comfortable even in Texas you know during summer or winter. Uh, I installed these hangers for my clothes for the next day and for my purses as well and have some storage bins at the end of my bed just kind of making use of all of this space up here and made this little rig on this side with uh, my computer, an old computer that I use to run my projector onto some recycled, upcycled teaching supplies, a throwaway billboard and a white sheet as my projector screen on this wall. So this is the other loft and it is obviously a lot more of a crawl space, especially with a, a full size or queen size mattress up here. Um, my dogs can climb up the stairs that we saw in the kitchen, even though they are a, l a little high. So sometimes uh, we sleep up here together. Oftentimes this is actually just their bed. Again, also they have multiple beds, but this is where they generally sleep at night because they are spoiled. Um, and also where I have a lot of my book storage, general storage games and things that I don't need on regular bases, but that I like to have if I have people over, as well as some extra spaces over there for anybody who stays up here. Just some extra bins to put things. Um, the basket that's up there is extra for the bed, extra sheets and blankets and things. So it normally doesn't live in that spot. It's another open spot for guests to use, as well as all of this space over here, just kind of making it nice so that there are places to put things if you are up here watching your TV, your laptop, anything um, on your devices over here. And this light I do use a little bit more because there's not any really opportunity for other lights on this side, but they are really bright also um, for when you're trying to get ready to sleep. So one is, one is plenty for nighttime. So one of the great things about my house is that I have a lot of windows, but also one of the not so great things about having a lot of windows, especially having a ceiling that slopes where windows are different sizes on one side than they are on the other side is finding curtains. As you can see, there are gaps in some of the curtains and I have them pulled to where the sun least bothers me or lights that are around me least bother me. But I've actually kind of started to like the ones in the other room, especially the gaps in the sides because they help me wake up in the morning when the sun is coming out. So I do appreciate that, but it did take some getting used to. It was a little bit of a challenge trying to make a decision on what exactly to buy without going completely custom, um, which is very expensive and not really what I was looking to do at the time to find something that fit best for all the windows. So I am a special educator and that does take a lot of my time. I don't really have any side hustles anymore, just trying to spend more time in this space that I do really enjoy spending time with my dogs, learning how to cook in my awesome new kitchen that I designed. Um, and I do have an Instagram, Nikki goes tiny and I K K I goes tiny on Instagram that does just follow new things that I add to the house, new plants, generally what I'm doing. Um, not as specific to the tiny home anymore since starting it, but a good place to check out what's going on. Thanks for checking out my tiny home. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're thinking about going tiny, I really hope that you think it all the way through, but then go for it because it's pretty awesome. <laughs>